don't need to stay here behind the podium. I'd like it if you did. Sure, I'll, I'll do my best. I pace when I talk, so I apologize if I start wandering. Just give me one of those. So, good evening. Uh, thanks for coming out. Um, how many of y'all were here in June when I did the talk on Google Analytics? Anybody? Yeah, it was the last meetup before the work camp. We were over uh, at the, I think it was at the Verizon Center, right? No, Brooklyn. Brooklyn, that's right. So, um, <clears throat> at that meetup, we talked about how to incorporate Google Analytics with your site. Kind of did a hands on tutorial on what those different reports and all the things inside of Google Analytics mean. And uh, we got some questions that night about uh, Google Search Console. And there's a couple of times where I think I mentioned it in the talk as well. So it made sense to do another talk that's kind of a continuation on that talk um, that's about Google Search Console and how to implement and understand the data that you get back from Search Console on your site. So if you weren't here for the talk on Google Analytics, you can go to the website and the YouTube channel, and the video of that talk is on there. Uh, I highly recommend you check that out. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, let's get started here. Come on, clicker. There we go. Slides are going to be here, so if you want to download those uh, for the links and things like that afterwards, just go to beacon.agency and then BOS GSC for Boston Google Search Console. Uh, feel free to take pictures of any of these slides as well if you'd like. So about me, my name is Edward Perry. I'm the president of the Beacon Agency in Houston, Texas. My email address, Twitter and Instagram handle, and LinkedIn are right there. If you'd like to get in touch with me, feel free to send me a LinkedIn request. Follow me on Twitter um, or just hit me up via email on any of these associated platforms. Um, I am a full-time digital nomad, meaning that I'm essentially homeless. Um, I like to fish and do things in the outdoors. I'm a proud alumni of the University of Miami. This is me and Sebastian. We kind of are recovering from a rough weekend getting beat by the <laughs> University of Florida on Saturday, but that's okay. Um, this is my dog, Callie. She travels with me full-time. Uh, she's kind of my, my road dog, as I call her. And this is our home slash my office, which is my RV. So I live and work out of that and travel around the country. Seasonally, I'm up here for the summers. Uh, I go down to Florida for the fall. And then in the winter, I go back to Texas. And then in springtime, I wander. So um, that's kind of home base. The, my business is operated completely online. We're a distributed agency. Uh, everybody works here in the United States, but works from home or their own offices or wherever they see fit. Uh, and that gives me the ability to travel. So I try to give back to the WordPress community whenever I can because the WordPress community is really what allowed me to establish my agency, kind of create a niche, and create the, the life that I have now. So kind of my thank you to the WordPress community is as I travel, I speak at as many meetups as I can. I go to a lot of work camps, and I've submitted several talks, but I've yet to be chosen for a work camp yet. Um, and I do talks at other meetups as well outside of the WordPress community, whether it be small business or digital analytics or uh, Amazon sellers groups or any number of other marketing and technology topics. Um, my business is a full service agency where we specialize in small businesses, but we're kind of a one stop shop. So I have to know a little bit about everything. That being said, I'm not an expert in everything. I'm not a developer. I know just enough code to be dangerous. Um, I am not a designer though I know what looks good and what doesn't. Um, so I kind of do my best to be everything for everybody, and then I hire the specialists who really do things well. So if you have a question that I can't answer, somebody on my team probably can, or I can find the answers for you. So if I tell you that uh, I'll get back to you on that one, that's why. So um, with that, I'd like to just jump into the talk. Um, the slides are going to be available, as I said. There's not a ton of information in the slides. Most of it's going to be actually when I pull up Google Search Console and show you. I'm going to do similar to the way that we did with the Google Analytics talk. I think the best way to understand it is to just get in there and look at a live site and see the data so that you can make sense of it. So this is all part of Google's marketing platform, which is their fancy name for their suite of tools that they offer. You don't see Search Console listed on here, but it works in cooperation with several of the things that you do see on here, including analytics and ads. So what is Search Console? If you go to this article on Google's website, the search.google.com, They'll tell you that Search Console tools and reports help you measure your site's search traffic and performance, fix issues, and make your site shine in Google search results. So essentially, it's Google's way of telling you 
what it likes or dislikes about your website and how you're performing in Google searches. So as you can imagine for someone who's in marketing like myself, this is some very useful information to know. We're going to talk specifically about what are some of my most favorite pieces of that information when we get into the console itself. But let's begin with the beginning, how do you get started with Search Console? So you can get to Google Search Console by going to search.google.com slash search dash console. I don't know why they made that such a difficult URL for one of the tools that I use all the time, but that's the way that they chose to do it. You'd log in there with your Google account and then you're going to add a website property to Search Console. When you add a website property, there's a, a link here that will give you step-by-step -step instructions from the Google support article. But essentially, you have two options when you're implementing Search Console with one of your websites. You can do either the URL prefix property, or you can do a domain property. A URL prefix property includes only URLs within the specified prefix, including the protocol HTTP or HTTPS. Whereas domain property is all the subdomains included on multiple or in on multiple protocols. So if you just want to do everything on your website and your website is uncomplicated, you don't have any subdomains or anything else, domain property is probably the way to go. It just is a blanket coverall for everything under that domain. If you have a complicated website that has multiple subdomains, possibly multiple installs of WordPress, and you want to piece those out to see reporting on each individual chunk of that website, you'd probably want to do the URL prefix property so that you could do things like m dot store dot shop dot or whatever and you can actually see search console results for each silo of your website so it's kind of a user preference there's four ways to verify your site so once you said i want to add this website and you've chosen your way your method of adding it now you have to verify that you actually own this site so that google can give you the information that you're requesting so that you can't just add anybody's website to your search console. So there's four ways to do it. You can do an HTML file, an HTML tag. You can verify using your Google Tag Manager. So if you were here and you already set up Tag Manager and you set up Google Analytics, that's the easiest one. All you have to do is just click through, say which property is which, and it will authenticate for you. Or you can do it with DNS record. So go to your DNS provider, put in a TXT record, and then verify it that way. Uh, again, if you go back to this link, that will give you step-by-step -step instructions on that. So if you have questions on how to actually get set up on this, there's a couple videos online if you just do a search in YouTube for uh, Search Console, or also if you just go to this article, it'll walk you through it, and it's pretty self-explanatory. Once you've got Search Console set up and connected to your website, you want to connect it to some other stuff as well. So if you're using Google Analytics, which you should be, you want to connect those two so that they can talk as well. And I'll pull up Google Analytics in a minute and show you some of the reports that you can connect that give you benefit here. But essentially, there's another link to another support doc here. Um, if you go into Google Analytics, go to Admin, navigate to the property that you want to connect. In the Property column, click on Property Settings. And then scroll down to Search Console Settings. You'll see the URL of your website, which confirms that that website's already been verified for ownership. And then you should be able to select the reporting views that you want and then click save and you're connected. Okay? So again, if you want some more help with that, follow this link right here um, or reach out to me and I can help you get that set up. Another thing you might want to connect it to is AdWords. So if you're using Google Ads for the website that you are implementing Search Console with, getting useful information in your ads account can be a nice touch as well. So again, another link to another Google Help Doc right here for how to connect this. This one's a little more complicated. Basically go into your ad account, click on the tools icon, which is the little wrench that shows up at the top. Under setup, go to linked accounts. Then you'll see a tab, or excuse me, like a tile for search console. Click details, and then you can click it through the connect from there. If you don't have any linked console accounts, you'll click link in that dialog box. If you do, you'll be able to click the plus button to add one. Once you get in there, you'll enter the URL of the website you want to link your Google Ads to. Um, you'll want to make sure that you add one version with the www and one without, but you don't need to specify HTTP or HTTPS protocol for that. Then click continue. It'll tell you if it's been verified or not and what the issue is if it has not and you should be done. Okay? So again, if you've got questions on that one, this help article will walk you through it step by step. And if you have continued issues, feel free to reach out to me and I'll be happy to help you. So that's it for getting set up. Any questions so far? Yes, sir. What's the advantage of connecting the 
ads the Search Console? Uh, I'll show you in a minute. I'm going to pull up ads and show you some of the places where you can connect. But essentially, if you're having crawl errors or you're having issues where um, there's something on your site that's preventing ad traffic from getting there or that an ad is not connected to your site for some reason, console can show some of that issues to you. Okay. Any other questions? All right, cool. So that being said, let's jump out of the slides here and let's look at some of the data. So real quick before we jump into the um, search console, so ads, or excuse me, analytics, if you want to get connected in here, uh, the steps are there, but once you've connected, if you look here under acquisition, there's a whole section called Search Console. Can you read that? That text looks awfully small. Is that better? I'm trying to zoom in here without messing it up too bad. Is that better? Can you see that a little? Okay, cool. So under acquisition, there's a Search Console tab here. Once you've connected Search Console, all four of these will populate. So now I can see landing page and which are my top performing landing pages. Uh, countries that my organic traffic are coming from, devices, and then my favorite, queries. What are people searching for that's getting them to my site, which can be extremely useful. So this is in Google Analytics, so that's a good reason to connect it there. When you get into ads, you'll go to tools, in the setup, go to linked accounts. I don't have this because my ads account is a manager account, so I can't connect it to any one specific site. But you would see one of these uh, tiles here, essentially, that would be for Search Console. Click the Details button on that, and that would allow you to do your connection in there. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so this is Google Search Console. It's kind of boring looking. It's not nearly as colorful as Google Analytics. <coughs> Search Console doesn't get, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> sinuses. <coughs> Search Console doesn't get the love that Google Analytics and some of these other tools have gotten recently with the big Google rebrand of the marketing platform. They created new colors and new logos and everything else. Google Search Console still is just flat, black, and gray with nothing on it. So I don't know why they've neglected this one so much, because I love this tool, but here it is in all of its glory. Um, if you've got multiple accounts set up with your Search Console account, so if you've been added as a user to multiple accounts, you'll see those up here in the top left-hand corner. There's this drop-down here, and then all the sites that you have available will populate in that list. So we're looking at my company's website for now, because I don't have to worry about NDAs with that. <coughs> But essentially, when you get in here, you're looking at the, the overview, which is your dashboard page. And this is kind of the quick and dirty view of everything that's going on with your site. From here, you've got performance, you've got coverage, and you've got enhancements. And we're going to talk about specifically what each of those things are in a second here. But let's look at performance first. So when I click into performance here, we get something that looks a little more like Google Analytics with a chart and some colors on it, so a little spruced up. Now, notice up here at the top, there's already some filters applied. So, search type is web, meaning web searches, not image searches, and not YouTube video searches. And then you can compare, meaning if you want to look at one type of search results versus another one, you can do that from in here. So that's up here in the filters. So right now, we're just looking at web searches, which is people typing in text. And then we're looking at the last three months. So you can change that as well. You can do 12, 16, custom, etc. So the bigger the time you look at, the more data you will get. Okay? You can also add additional filters here. So queries, pages, countries, device, search appearances. If you want to only look at your US traffic or things like that, you can apply those queries and or you can apply country from here and do that. So you can kind of just narrow in on what's important to you and where your traffic's coming from. So once we scroll down past this uh, chart here, you see there's a couple tabs across the top of this next section. So these are important. Um, queries. So each one of these is, is essentially something that somebody typed into Google for a search that led them to my website. So the name of my company, Beacon Agency, makes sense. Beacon Advertising, sometimes we get people who are actually looking for Beacon, the advertising agency, which could be us, it could also be Beacon Advertising, which is based out of Dallas, or it could be 
Bluetooth low energy beacon advertising, which I can't tell you how many requests I've got for proposals on implementing Bluetooth beacons. And like, well, we can do that, but is that really what you're looking for? Um, beacon Advertising Agency, The Beacon Agency, Beacon Advertising Dallas, that's definitely not us, Beacon Marketing Agency, Beacon Marketing, Beacon Marketing Companies, again, that's probably somebody looking for Bluetooth beacons. So you can start to see where your traffic is coming from here and what people are typing in for search results. The next tab over is Pages. Oh, excuse me, I forgot to mention that you can sort these as well. So you've got column headers over here, you've got the filter tab, so you can filter your rows, and you can export any of this data. So if you want to save any of these to send them out to somebody else in your company or save it as a report, you can download and export that data right from there. Okay? So pages is your top pages. So you can see number of clicks. If you want to see your worst performing pages, just click on clicks and it will invert that. You can also do it based on impressions. So best impressions, worst impressions, and what that looks like, okay? Countries, just what it sounds like. Where's your traffic coming from? Again, sortable by clicks and impressions. Devices, same story. Desktop, mobile, or tablet. Where are people coming from? Clicks and impressions, sortable again. And then search appearance. So this is the different types of search <coughs> results that Google can display and which ones you're showing up for. So for most businesses that are operate online only, like mine, probably not as useful as if you were a local business, because then you could see where you're showing up in the Google Local Pack or the Google Maps engine, or if you're showing up in YouTube search results and things like that. We're not currently doing anything with video, so we don't have any video search results, and that makes sense. Okay. So that is performance. So that's essentially where you show up and how you're performing in search results. Any questions on any of that information so far? Cool. Um, yes, ma'am. Yep. PDF. Yes. Can you can Google search your PDF content? Can Google search your PDF, PDF content? PDF content. How do you mean? Like if like, if someone okay, is looking. For example, in my PDF for content, one of the key terms mm -hmm. I want to search in the search uh, in the surface. If that content is a keyword that you want to show up for in a search result, I would recommend you turn that PDF into HTML because I don't believe that the robots can crawl your PDF and get that text out of there, especially if it's saved as an image. I don't think that there'd be any way for Google to know what's on that page. So if, you're, if your content is like in a PDF, I would recommend at least making like, if you want to have a, like a link to a download of it, that's cool, but I would still have it in HTML as well so that it's displayed on the page so that it can't be crawled. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. Yes? In my institution, cool. we have thousands and thousands of PDFs that Google can't pick it up. That's enough. They have to send the PDF to the library. Yeah, I'm sure. So um, there's a couple of tools out there that might make some of that work a little bit easier for you. I'm not sure of one off the top of my head that converts PDFs directly, but there's one that I use all the time that I love called Wordable. That's a plugin for WordPress that converts Google Docs into WordPress posts. Um, there might, I'm not sure exactly what it would be called, but there's probably something like that for PDFs where it pulls the, the text and images out and turns it into a post for you. But um, that might be something to look at. You might also look at just over out, outsourcing it overseas because it's a very remediary task where it's just a lot of copy paste, copy paste, copy paste. So if you have a lot of PDFs that you need to convert over to HTML, that might be a way to look at doing it as well. Um, it's also something you could do yourself. It's just like I said, very time consuming because lots of highlight, copy, paste, update, highlight, copy, paste, update, and just repeat over and over and over again. Yeah, you had a question? Yeah. Would a Google Search Console uh, keywords be mm -hmm. enough for us to find out what are uh, specific people looking for in comparison to the tool SEMrush as marketing intelligence? Uh, would you recommend that? Would I you recommend think both. Google Search Console would be just... enough? Yeah, so I recommend both. Um, we use SEMrush as well, and I love SEMrush. And you can also connect Search Console to SEMrush and get more data. So if, if anybody else is in here using SEMrush for SEO tools, highly recommend that you connect Analytics and Search Console to SEMrush for each of your properties because that will open up more reports and give you more data. 
Um, I like to use both. SEM Rush will recommend keywords using its own algorithm, and then Search Console will give you keywords that actually led people to your site. So I guess that's one thing I would say that's important is when you look at queries here like these, um, let me scroll down a little bit. So like these queries, these are not necessarily keyword ideas. These are keywords that someone used that led them to my site. Whether that was the right site for them or not, this doesn't give us any data. For example, the person who was looking for beacon marketing companies or um, beacon advertising probably was looking for something that had to do with Bluetooth beacons. And so we do that. It's not really a core competency. So were we really the best search result for that? Probably not. But something about what showed up in the snippet about our company made it seem like we were the right choice. And so they clicked through and came to our site. So you have to be careful here because this is reporting what happened, not what should have been happening, if that makes sense. Is that clear? Yeah. OK, cool. So so you may have negative keywords in here that were traffic that just bounced. Because what doesn't show up in here is bounce rate, right? So we've got volume of clicks. We've got cost per click uh, connected to, once it's connected to AdWords. You've got competition, meaning if you were advertising for these, how much competition do you have against you? Number of clicks and number of impressions. But nothing in here says, did they bounce off the site immediately? Did they have a user session of less than 30 seconds? So I would. I would, this is useful information, but I would take it with a grain of salt and compare it with other sources. And I would probably take a look at keywords on this list and compare them with what SEM Rush gives you and use those as kind of your content ideas. Within the SEM Rush, which plan would you recommend to start with? Language? Uh, no, plan. The oh, which plan? plan? Oh, uh, that really depends on your needs. Um, like, so if you need to be able to white label reports, for example, or how many projects you're working on. Uh, for most people, the first plan is sufficient. Um, it's usually not until you have lots of projects or you need lots of rows or lots of exports that you need to move up, uh, or if you need to add team members or white labeling. And, you know, I'd be happy to talk to you about it some more afterwards. Thank you. Good questions. Any other ones? Yes, sir. So, like you were talking, a bit, a lot of traffic coming from your site from it's not intended. Yeah, what we call a negative keyword. Right. So. Sure, you can do negative keywords with Google Ads, but how do you, what's your remedy for that? For keeping negative traffic off my site? Yeah. I'm not really trying to remedy it. I don't really care if people come to my site and it's the wrong information for them because that traffic still makes me look good to Google. Um, it's not a great I mean, user experience. What if they're bouncing all the time? Because they're like, oh, that, that wasn't what I was looking for. It's not your bounce rate is higher. <laughs> Well, for me, I'm the only person that pays attention to my company's bounce rate, so I don't really have a client to answer to there. But if it was for one of my clients, um, we would try and figure out what content those people were landing on first to figure out which page they were getting sent to, and then figure out what it was about that page that Google thought was marketing beacons. Um, for me, like the marketing beacon one is because we're beacon marketing. So just inverting the words, it sounds like beacon marketing, that makes sense. Uh, but, you know, in a client situation, it may be way more complicated than that. So you probably have to do some homework. Uh, at the end of the day, though, there's something about what Google is pulling off of the page that it's sending that traffic to that it believes is the same thing as a marketing beacon. So I'd have to figure out what's in that title tag, what's in the snippet, what's Google crawled from this page, what does it think the content is. Um, and from there, try and make some adjustments to what's actually on the page and then tell Google to go back and re-index it. That would probably be the best bet as far as remediating a lot of people that are coming yeah. there for, as false <clears throat> I'm sure, I have a friend of mine that owns a company that their, their company name and another company name that was like a, uh, a communication company that did like robocalls. They basically had the same name just in two different locations. Got it. You put up a page and huge amounts of traffic go to that page. So I'm like, all you're doing is attracting it instead of deterring it. Yeah. Um, so I was just wondering, you know, what do you do with them? Yeah, you could also change the, the name of the homepage to be more clear that it's a different business, uh, if that's the landing page that they're getting to. So sometimes just changing the page title. No, they created a separate landing page. They created a page that says, we are not this company. We have never been associated with this company. 
So what's happening is that page is getting found more. Got it. Which I don't know if that's the best way to do it. Yeah. Um, I mean, all that traffic can't really hurt you. Um, it's, you know, if you're doing advertising, it could hurt you, but. Well, it's like their number one page. And I'm like, that's not what we want all the traffic to go to. Yeah, no. I, yeah, I would be more worried about getting good traffic to the right pages than avoiding bad traffic to the wrong pages. So, okay. Any other questions? Yes, sir. One question. You said that it's possible to track the IP origin country? Uh, for <coughs> users? Not down to the user level, but if I go to countries here, I can see how many clicks and how many impressions I got from users in those countries. I see. But I can't go down to like an IP address level and see what country it came in from. There are other tools that can do that, but Search Console will give you that information. Well, uh, WordPress itself in my sites offers a kind of global map with numbers. Yep. You're talking in WordPress.com? Yes. Yes. Yeah, and that's from Jetpack. Does that answer your question? It does. I mean, I'm trying to figure out how I use it from here to go into something graphic. graphic like Analytics that. would probably be a better spot for you. So if you go into audience and then demographics and then, or excuse me, geo and then location, you'll get more useful information from here I about see. who those users are. And then you can drill down a bit more. So I can drill down into the United States and see what states they're yeah. coming from. And I can drill down into the states and see what cities they're coming from. So this is a lot more in-depth reporting on who these people are, and that's on the analytics side. Search Console is just kind of the light version of that with the number of users, clicks, and impressions. So what Google Analytics does not show you is traffic that didn't come to your site because it's only reporting on what happened on your site, right? Because we put in a tag that fires on the site. Every time a page loads, it reads information about who that person was and records it. With Search Console, what we're looking at here is how you performed in search results. So that's where impressions, which is normally something that's used when we're talking about advertising, comes into play. Because I showed up in, so let me go back to queries. So I showed up in 1,703 search results for Beacon Agency, but I only got 436 clicks out of those impressions. So that's showing me that there was a lot of people who searched for Beacon Agency that weren't looking for me. We're looking for something else, uh, and so on and so forth. So that information is really useful because Google Analytics is not going to tell you things like how many people didn't come to your site. It's only going to show you the people that did. So if you're really curious about who those people are, how they behave, and what they may be doing on your site, Google Analytics is the place you want to look at for that. If you're curious as to how people are finding you and how many people are or are not clicking through on those search results, then Search Console is probably the better choice. Does that make sense? Very good, yes, thanks. Great. Yes, sir. I'm just curious about the CPC and comp uh, columns. I know you mentioned that before. Yes, sir. Are, are you running AdWords ads on your site and people's I am not, no. What, so what, this is Google yeah. Search Console pulling in this data from the AdWords platform and then applying it here to the queries that I showed up for in search performance. So I'm not currently running any ads, but this is just giving me information because that's how Google makes their money, okay. uh, is by ads that we run. So it's saying, hey, you know, there's not a lot of competition for this one. Maybe you might want to run some ads there. That's what it's basically there for. It's, it's kind of an upsell, <laughs> if anything. Oh, I touched it again. Oh. Sorry. Thank you. i got to stop touching the wire. Oh, OK. Sorry. I'll try not to touch it again. All right. Any other questions? Those are good ones. OK, cool. So that's all performance. URL inspection. So this next tab over here underneath performance, top left-hand corner. If I want it to look at any specific URL, I can just type that in this bar here. So this little icon in the left is kind of redundant now that this universal search bar is in here. So if I go to you know my homepage, beacon.agency, and I just want to run that through here and do an inspection on it, I can just type that in. Oops. this. What? <laughs> Am I? You're going to make me include the slides. 
I don't know why it keeps doing that. Not in the currently selected property. That's weird. I don't really have an excuse for that one, but but if you wanted to inspect the URL, that's where it should work. Uh, the next one down is index. So this is where Google is giving you information about what's going on when it's trying to crawl your site. So first one is coverage. So in this drop down here, you've got all known pages, all submitted pages, and then you can filter based on specific sitemaps that you've submitted. If you have not already submitted a sitemap to Google, you can do that from in here. So what you would do is go down here to settings and the gear. So you can see already that this is verified. You can see my user and permissions. You can do that there. This is all set up here. Um, Okay, we're back here. So right now, we're looking at all known pages. Zero with error, which is good. Zero with warnings, which is good. 51 that are valid, and then 192 that are submitted. So these 192 pages are kind of suspect. Most of these probably shouldn't be here because there's no way I have that much site content on my WordPress site. Um, WordPress makes a lot of pages that end up being like index pages and like uh, category pages, uh, author pages, and things like that. Google indexes all that stuff, and it goes and it tries to figure out which ones are useful, which ones are not, and which ones should be uh, included in search results, and which ones should not, which ones are duplicates, which ones are not. The more of that stuff that you can clean up before the robot gets there, the better off you are, because if you don't clean it up ahead of time, the robot's going to make its best guess on what it thinks it should do with those files. So it's important to keep that clean. Uh, obviously, I'm not doing a very good job of that, because there should not be that many in here. Um, so if I select impressions as a dimension here, I can see um, where those are. Now what I'm looking at here is errors versus impressions. So errors actually is a line on this, but it's this orange one that goes all the way across the bottom because I don't have any currently indexed errors, which is really good. If I did, you would see this line come up to one somewhere and then it would be just a straight line across it one. Okay? So that's what that's looking at there. You can add or remove impressions if you want to. If you're looking at um, a big spike in traffic that caused a bunch of errors, you could see that by turning impressions on here. So I can see like, hey, there's a big spike of traffic here, or on this day there was a spike of traffic, and you can start to figure out what those were and what caused them. Okay. When I click on this one, that's valid with warnings. When I click on this, this is valid, and then this is the excluded. So again, I can turn these on and off by clicking on the tabs. It's on there in whatever kind of combination I want to, okay? So that's kind of fun. Now, when I'm clicking on these down here, or excuse me, up here, it's also adjusting down at the bottom in the details section. So if I want to click on valid, it will actually show me what the valid ones are, okay? So indexed and submitted, or indexed not submitted in sitemap. So if I want to get more information on these, I can click into that row. Now I can see all of the verified pages. Okay. So this is kind of the drill down into that. So same thing here, if I want to do valid with warnings, if there were any, they would show up here and I could see specific information about what those warnings are at the page level, so that I can then go address each one of those individual issues with that. Okay. Um, and then excluded these, so you can see these like Crawled, currently not indexed, discovered, not indexed, excluded by no index tag, crawl anomaly, alternate page with proper, proper canani <laughs> canonical tag, soft 404, page with a redirect, duplicate submitted URL, not selected as canonical, or not found 404. And so you can see the numbers for all of those. Again, if I want to just click through, I can. Let me pick one that's interesting. So soft 404, click that. Now I can see right here at the page level what these soft 404s are. Um, yeah, WP page JSON, that's weird. Some plugin stuff. So all things that shouldn't be in here, right? So stuff now I can send to my devs and go, what's this? <coughs> Fix that. Okay? So that's coverage. Questions? on coverage. Yeah. yeah. 
What if you have a 1.57k valid, mm -hmm. but 6.14k excluded? That's like... That's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. But would that necessarily be bad if... That Depends what they are. So if there's useful content on those pages that are getting included that should be indexed, then yeah, that's bad because that means Google is ignoring a whole bunch of your pages. If you get in there and it's a lot of stuff that's not pages that users should be landing on and they're excluded, that's a good thing because it's just eliminating duplicate search results. So I would have to look at the list below the... Correct, yeah. So you said um, excluded? 6.14. Yeah, so when you click on excluded, it's going to give you some groups here. Yeah. So crawled, not indexed, discovered, not indexed, uh, excluded by a no index tag means that something on the site is telling Google don't crawl this, whether that's WordPress or if you're using like Yoast SEO or something like that. Um, crawl anomaly, that means something went wrong. We should definitely look into that group for sure. Um, soft 404s, redirects, 404 not founds, those are all errors, so those you should definitely look into and address. Um, but then the rest is just kind of a process of elimination of figuring out if it should or should not be indexed. But, um, if, but you, go ahead. if you have cleaned up the site, Google mm -hmm. will automatically delete and exclude everything. The next time that it crawls the site again. And you can tell it to crawl the site again. Cool. So once you get in here, you'll get this list of URLs. And if you have a development team that's working on this, again, you can just go to this export data button, click that button get a CSV or a Google Sheets file, and it will be all those URLs. And you can kind of turn that into like a checklist that you can just go down and eliminate. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, sir. What is a soft 404? Soft 404, you mean like versus a hard 404? Or do you know what that is? First, let's start with that. You know what hard 404 is? So soft 404, uh, let's see what Google defines it as. I know what my definition is, but I want to see what they say. Mm -hmm. It's a URL that returns a page telling the user that the page does not exist and also a 200 level success code. In some cases, it might be a page with little or no content, for example, a sparsely populated or empty page. So not a hard 404 and that the page doesn't exist, but that there's like nothing oh. on that page, I guess. It's like the, something went wrong here. Yes. And then you put it, so it's your 404 page. Yeah, exactly. It's like so it's still the 404. But like an, almost a half intentional 404, I guess, or a semi 404. Well, it's a pretty 404. Right? Yeah, exactly. It's a pretty one. That's that's a good way to define it. Okay. Other questions? All right. Cool. Site maps. So this is where your site maps get submitted. Um, if you want to add an additional sitemap, you just add it in right here. So you can see beacon.agency is already added, then you just add in the, the suffix at the end of that for wherever your sitemap is. If you're using an SEO plugin like a Yoast or something similar to that, it's going to create these sitemaps for you and give you those links. So you just have to copy that link from your WordPress install or your WordPress panel and paste it in here and say, hey Google, this is where my sitemaps are. There are some plugins that will automatically notify Google and Bing that you have a sitemap and that it needs to come crawl up by sending them a ping. Um, I find it's better to just go straight to the source and tell them in here, these are where my sitemaps are. Depending on how your site is set up, what SEO plugins you're using, and how you've created your pages, you might have multiple sitemaps. You might even have a sitemap index that lists all your sitemaps. I have some clients that have 15 sitemaps. It just depends. So um, every site's a little different. There's no real like cut and dry answer here. Uh, if you have a very simple site map, you might just need the one if it's just pages. If you have a lot of blog posts that are structured out into categories, you might have a site map just for your posts, uh, just identifying what the categories are. Um, I've seen author site maps. I've seen video site maps. So there are all different types of site maps. And the more information that you can give Google, the, the more it knows what to do, and the better it can crawl your site. Okay. So you would create your sitemap if you need help with that. Um, see me afterwards, or again, you can just jump on YouTube and there's tons of tutorials on how to create a sitemap, uh, which plugins to use and things like that. I'm sure every WordPress dev in here has got their own answer to that question, which ones are the best, because there's so many of them, but, uh, but there's lots of them. And then you would add them here, so you just type it in, you'd hit submit, and then you're good. Google will then crawl that, okay? 
Next one is enhancements. This is super important. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you mentioned you can tell Google to call your site. Yes. How do you do that? Uh, the re-index. Oh, re-index. Yeah, let me remember now, because they've. I remember where it was in the old one, but. It's in Google Search. Search console. Okay, so it looks like you can either do it with the inspection tool, or when you add a new sitemap, it will give you that option. Yep, no problem. All right, so mobile usability. This is important, and I'm already being bad because I've got errors in here, but mobile search is probably the majority of your search traffic, again, depending on your business and how your website's structured and who your users are and things like that, but most people are on their mobile devices more than they're on their desktops. So if you have mobile usability issues on your site, Google is going to be less likely to show you in mobile search results. So you may still perform great in web desktop search results, but you may be getting penalized in mobile search results because your site is not customized, or excuse me, not optimized for the mobile user. So if there are things that show up in here like clickable elements too close together or content is wider than the screen, you need to get in and adjust those issues. And then once you've done that, it will automatically re-index that page for you. There's an option to tell it to do so, okay? So what I can do here is I'll click on one. Here's an issue. This icon right here will take me to that page. Um, if I select this, I can see test live page right here, and that will run a test on it to see if that usability issue still exists, okay? So you can actually use the tool to address some of these issues as well if they've been fixed, okay? You can also see the last crawl date. So if you've made an adjustment since the last time that that page was crawled, then that adjustment might not be showing up. You might need to tell Google, go back and crawl this again, okay? Also, when you're done, there's this green button up here in the top that says validate fix. Anything you adjust in here, if you wanna make sure that Google knows you've done that, hit that button, that will go back and crawl it again, okay? All right, so take a look at that one. Links, this is an interesting one. External links, so top linked pages. These are all the different pages that link to my website. This is really useful information that a lot of people have no idea even exists in here. So there's 4,780 backlinks to my site. I can view every single one of them in here as Google sees them, okay? Internal links. So these are one page of my site to another, moving around inside my site. My most linked page, my home page. that makes sense. My three service pages, my top three service pages are the next one. So advertising, technology, and marketing, three core competencies that we work in, right? So this is all good, because that's what I want to be up there. Uh, the one over here, top linking sites. So these are the sites that link back to my site that get the most traffic, okay? And then top linking text. So of the places where there are links to my site, what is the text that they're using in that link? And is that helping? Okay, so I can see Beacon, HTTPS Beacon Agency, www Beacon Agency, Beacon Agency, etc. Right. So that's the actual text in there. Yes, sir. Your backlinks. Did you actively pursue that? How did that happen? Four thousand plus. Um, time, patience. Yeah, I haven't actually. I haven't actively pursued. Oh, I touched it again. Sorry. <laughs> keep moving it just a little bit, that's all it needs. Um, I didn't actively pursue that. We haven't done any backlink building for ours. It's all been organic, um, but we publish a lot of content on social, which I think has created some of that for sure. Also, we have done some citation campaigns as far as like making sure my business listings are up to date across the web, so that even though it's not backlink building, is building backlinks, so that probably pays into it too. Also, I publish all of my information to um, all of the search aggregators, so Factual, Axiom, and all of those. So once a year, all of our information gets updated with the big four there, and then that makes sure that we're getting listed on lots of different business listing websites, you know, the Mantas, the Triple Bs, and all of those companies um, well, who all make a living off of collecting our data and selling it again. Somebody in the back? Oh. It helps to speak at WordPress meetups and say the name of your company? Yep. Also, I always put it in slides. Um, if you build websites and your clients will allow you to put uh, designed by in the footer with a link to your site, every single one of those becomes a backlink. I can't tell you how many people have gotten to my site through websites that we've built. It's an extremely useful tool. 
Um, it's in my contract that if you sign up with us and you're going to do a website with us, it says that you've given us the ability to promote our services and use your stuff in our portfolio. So somebody can specifically opt out of that, but by signing and agreeing to that, that means that I can put a link to my website in your footer. And it's really small, it's not obtrusive, we always try to do it very tastefully. Um, we just do Powered by Beacon, Beacon is the link and that's it. And that's sufficient, we get traffic from that all the time. I've had lots of people reach out to me and I've actually been able to go back and follow with the, the super creepy tracking tools I have on my site, follow where people come from when they open up live chats and submit forms. And often it's from a client's website, which is really nice. Okay, um, so links is there, top linking text. You can drill down into those. You can export this page as well. So if you're looking for uh, information and you need to share this, hit that button there. The settings is here, there's not a ton in there. As I mentioned, you could submit feedback. This is the new version. If you want to see what the old version looked like, you can go back. Um, it's slightly more confusing than this one, if that's even possible, so I don't recommend that unless you really like old things. Um, and that's really about it, so I think I have like two more minutes. Any other questions that I can answer for you on Search Console? Yes, sir? I have a question about submitting a site map. Yeah. Um, for a new site, is there a, um, like a, I don't know, a wait period that you should do before you submit? As soon as you launch. Okay. We do it the day that the site goes live, because you can't do it sooner than that. Um, so as soon as we move it from the development server to the live server, we, we use the, the whatever plugin we're using for the SEO to create the sitemaps, and then we submit that to Search Console. We put the Google Analytics tracking code in, we set up Tag Manager and do all that stuff, and we put in all the associated pixels that we're using, and it's all part of our launch checklist. But part of that in the SEO section of the launch checklist is to submit that day. And then do you go and look for those errors and the extra pages and things you showed yep. us? Yes. Yeah, because once you submit, it'll maybe take a couple days. Sometimes it could be a week for Google to actually get a bot over there to crawl it and then you can get emails from them. Um, so when you set up your Search Console account, one of the nice things I didn't mention is that you'll get emails from Google's Search Console team saying, hey, we found a mobile usability issue, or hey, there's a crawl error on this page. And those are extremely useful notifications, obviously, because you can go in and fix it immediately. But yeah, we usually schedule about a week out, go in there, take a poke around. We also, as soon as we launch, use some of our own tools to run through things and see what is going on, if anything got broken, if there's internal broken links. SEM Rush Site Audit Tool is great for that. Um, but yeah, we give everything kind of a once over once it hits the production server just to see if there's anything going on there. Yes, sir. Um, so I have some semantic markup on my site for yep. jobs and events, among other things. Yep. And within Search Console, under the enhancement section, I do see sections there for those uh, post types, essentially. Yep. Uh, and it shows me warnings, anything that's wrong with it, etc. It doesn't give me any sense of how often different items appear in search in the same way that within performance I can for the site as a whole within web or image search. Is there any place where I can see for Google's job search or Google's event search how often items from my site are coming up? Not that I'm aware of, but it may exist somewhere. I, I've never seen that in Search Console, so I'm pretty sure it's not in there if it's anywhere. Okay. Um, and you have had clients that have similar kind of semantic markups on their site? I have not, actually. Not for okay. those okay. specific ones. but I've, So maybe it does exist in there when, when it's connected. Um, maybe in the Google My Business platform? There might be something in there. But let's, when we're done here, let's chat a little bit afterwards, because that's an interesting question. I've not looked into that before. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions? So, yeah, go ahead. Um, Site verification, going back to what you talked about at yes, the beginning sir. of the presentation. Yeah. Are there any known issues with that? Because I, I, for quite a while, I had a problem where Google would just drop my site from Google Search Console and say it was no longer registered and I, I, I couldn't do anything the domain with it. wasn't registered? Or? I, had to, I had to take it down and recreate the property for it. That's strange. I've never heard of that before. And you know, I wrote a blog for software developers, and I blogged about my problem. That is one of the top pages that, that gets hit on my site. So I think there's even if <laughs> somebody else has got that issue uh, then, yeah. Every now and then they drift in that they're having the same kind of issues. Yeah. You, but you, you haven't heard of anything. There was nothing, like no reason for it, no alert, like, hey, 
there's a problem here or somebody else has tried to verify the site? No, it was, it was really very generic. You, you couldn't see any, I, I couldn't see the property anymore, so I couldn't even see any, any uh, errors Strange. on it. Uh, and I just, that, that was when I was using Google Analytics. I stopped using Google Analytics. I basically stopped using the, the verification token, so the problem just went when away. When you verified it, how did you do it? Was it with uh, DNS or was I created, it? With... I, I added an HTML page. HTML. Hmm. We almost always do it with Tag Manager because we use Tag Manager on every site, and so I've never had a problem doing it that way. So okay. maybe try giving that a shot and see if the same issue occurs when you verify with Tag Manager. Because okay. maybe it's something about the way that that HTML, excuse me, HTML page is getting crawled that when it can't find that record anymore for some reason, it's yeah. This is an HTML page that's generated by Google when you add the property. Yeah, and, and you're supposed to put that on your site, and then everything's supposed to happen by magic. But for strange. Some reason it, it was having yeah, the it's one of those ones where it creates it at your top level domain, right? It's yes. A page yes. just right. right. Yeah, right. Interesting. Yeah, try the Tag Manager one. We've had good success with that, and because it's in the Google ecosystem, they like it. So right. So that's it. Out of time. Just give me a, a thumbs up or halfway or down. Was that useful for you? Cool. And then, did you learn something new? Saying yes or no? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Appreciate that. Well, like I said, if you have questions, I'll put my contact info back up here again. Um, feel free to here's the big one. Email me. Tweet at me. Send me a LinkedIn request. Uh, whatever I can do to help. Um, I love answering these questions and every time I meet somebody that's run into something that I've not experienced before, it helps me kind of sharpen my tool shed a little bit better. So let me know how I can help you if you've got questions. Um, uh, feel free to carry the conversation on Twitter. Um, I love that too because then that becomes public content that anybody can find and search for. So if you've got a question that you think might be applicable, hit me up on Twitter. Otherwise, feel free to email me or send me a message. Okay. Thanks so much for your time. I appreciate it. Be safe getting home this evening. And uh, I'll be hanging around chatting until Tom throws me out of here if you've got other questions. Okay. Thank you.